Yes, sir. We're on, man. We're live. What? Why do we seem so surprised? <laughs> because, because you tell me you were live, and the little button still tells me you were off there. <laughs> so, I see the so little button that's just live. <laughs> you know, that's Carlos always trying to trick me with the new show. Hey, Carlos, how you doing? So, hey. Yeah, we're back again. We've got a guest this week. So that's hey, we got we got uh, you know th this guy. I've been looking up to his work for many many years. Um, he's got a great whimsical watercolor style, pen and ink style. Um, and I, you know, when I first started illustrating Bob, when I first started, uh, I guess it was in the mid, late, late 80s. Um, 1880s? 80s, oh, you're right. 19, <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I, li I like where you're going with that. Um, <laughs> but I used to look, you know, I used to, when I started advertising in these uh, illustration directories and stuff, I used to see uh, Steve Yorkman's um, work yeah. in there. And, yeah. And, I, and, I, and I saw his stuff everywhere. It was like advertising. I mean, it was you couldn't look in anything that was printed and not see his work. Right. And I just admire his work so much. It's just that it just looked like so simple. Yet, you know, as an illustrator, you know, you know how how much work went into getting something to look so easy and simple and, and simplistic. I know. Um, I get really jealous of that kind of work too. Yeah. yeah so it's, uh, it's really fun to look at it. Absolutely. So uh, we'll we'll share a link to to Steve's work, but I, I want to introduce Steve Yorkman uh, to the Google Hangouts with Carlos and Bob. Welcome, Steve. Well, thank you for inviting me. Well, my pleasure. You know, it took us a while to get get you on. We we had some. Uh, Google doesn't make this easy, does it? <laughs> you well, gotta work for it, man. <laughs> my my technical ineptness is what it is. <laughs> You gotta want it bad. Yeah, you I doubt it. Me and Bob have been doing this for over a month now. We we it doesn't get any easier for us either. That's right. You don't just show up to Google. Google, Google makes you work for it. Well, at least at least you know which buttons to push to get me there. You know, yeah. I, I'm sitting here staring at a screen, not having a clue. That's funny. <laughs> so, Steve, for for people that aren't familiar with, you know, your your work, um, can you tell us, you know, how you got started? How long have you been in the business? Tell us, tell us a little bit of, about you, the, the background. Well, I, I could probably um, show. I could hold up a couple of things that would show people my some of my sure. work. Yeah, that would be helpful. And we'll, yeah, and we'll, and we'll put a link in there too to your, to your website where people can see it. And we'll post um, a couple of images. Yeah, I, I do a loose style of uh, uh, pen and ink and watercolor uh, cartoon style, and I'm trying to communicate a sense of emotion um, often. Uh, with editorial, you know, jobs, you know, okay, what idea um, or concept are they trying to express, and how can I make that concept come alive visually? Often, uh, with a sense of whimsy, and sometimes it'll be, it'll span uh, a distance. I mean, I did a, you know, I do a lot of children's books now. This one was for uh, Jeff Foxworthy, the the comedian, and. So a lot of children's books now, but I'll even I'll do do work for a, a bank director magazine where they're trying to illustrate a cold statistical concept, and they'll call me to try to say how can we make how can we warm this up how can we use a metaphor to communicate the image so it'll it'll span quite a a, a large range. Okay, excellent. So uh, when you started your when did you start your career? How long ago? I was originally going to be a high school English teacher, and instead I wound up, you know, all the stuff I got in trouble for doing in grade school is what led me into this career, drawing during class. So, uh, you know, my dad was involved in advertising um, as a color separator, and young people nowadays would have no idea what a color separator is, but um, those of us who've been around the business for a while might might know. And so he would show my my cartoons to art directors at Chiat Day and, you know, at Doyle Dane and BBDNO and all this, and I, I would be mortified, you know, that my dad, you know, would be showing my drawings to these people, but it gave me encouragement, and so, um, you know, when I came, I was going to be, a, I did my student teaching, I was going to teach high school English, and then, you know, I took a job doing some design work instead, just for a little while, and then the design work led into uh, adding more of my illustrations into it. And then I decided to not be a freelance uh, designer and just to try being a freelance illustrator. And at that time, I was single, and my expenses were low, and I didn't have much to lose. Excellent. 
So did you, did you primarily start in advertising or did you start with editorial? Because I know a lot of people coming into illustration, they tend to start in editorial and, you know, the holy grail is advertising. That's where the money is. That's, you know, yeah, that's high right. pressure. So yeah. did you start with, with editorial or did you just go right into advertising? Um, I started off, you know, taking, schlepping my portfolio around to advertising agencies. So I probably kind of started there. Although um, that, you know, and certainly advertising is the holy grail in terms of income and and uh, in my career, you know, it's it's certainly ebbed and flowed over the years. Um, and so I, do, and I frankly don't do as much advertising work now. And maybe that's due to my own poor self-promotion or styles changing or, you know, it could be any one of a number of, of, of things. But I started off in advertising. In fact, I, I remember the, the first time, in fact, this is when fax machines were just invented. And I got a phone call from an ad agency in San Francisco, and I'm down in Southern California. And the guy said, we have this job, you know, for you, but all that we can pay for this ad is $600, and I'm really sorry that that's all we have. And for me, that was like three times as much as I'd ever been paid for anything. <laughs> and so I, I said, well, I guess that'll be all right. And <laughs> As soon as they got off the phone, I was I was just like, yes. But next time it's got to be two grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that took a while. That's great. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, I've been familiar with your work for for a long, long time, and, and mostly due to the the advertising work again, because I was advertising a lot of the directories at the time, and and I myself was working with a lot of advertising agencies, and um, it, it just you know. It seems like your work at at one point was just about everywhere. Um, did you have an agent, or did you have? Uh, you had mentioned going to, to agents. I mean, back then, you know, we did the footwork, the the leg work, and we ended up going to studios and, and meeting personally with art directors. Uh, did you have an agent, you know, to to really grow that that part of your business, or was it just you uh, putting the stuff out there, or was it just people seeing your work and and them flocking to you? Well, I, I I wouldn't use the word flocking. Um, uh, maybe I had at different times back when I started. Agents were more regionally located. Um, now agents, because of the of electronic media and the rest of it, you know, a, one agent can handle the country easily. But back when I started, agents would personally go and call on people, and so to be locate, to have an agent in New York meant the agent in New York would know the art directors in New York and could personally call on them. Um, and so I had an agent in New York and an agent in Chicago area and an agent in the LA area, and then that you know has changed over the years, and so. Uh, um, I would occasionally go and call on clients, especially at the beginning, but then I would trust uh, the agents to do, you know, a lot of that uh, that calling later on. Okay. Are you still working with an agent? Um, I had been up until recently, so right now I do not have an agent, and hopefully in the next year or so I may start, you know, that process again of looking for an agent that wants the kind of work that I do. Yeah. So, where you find yourself doing more children's books now than than, than um, stuff? Or? I'll do I do a lot of greeting card stuff. My brother and I years ago, um, uh, you know, decided. You know what? I wonder if we could do a line of greeting cards. You know, being kind of you know an an illustrator like 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 we are. You know, we're freelance, and so if if work comes in, we eat, and if work doesn't come in, we're you know we're getting slimmer. Um, <laughs> That's a good but, uh, one. <laughs> so we're That's basically, a nice fad diet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The starving artist diet. <laughs> yes. And it works. It really works. Um, uh, it's not very we're, pleasant, we're, though. <laughs> we're, we're, by nature, we're kind of entrepreneurial. And so, you know, I had done some, some drawings for a college professor's book 
and so they were a book on college life. And so my brother and I thought he was still in college at the time, and so we thought let's do a line of cards aimed at college life. And we did every single mistake you could make in doing greeting cards. Most greeting cards are five by seven. Ours were some odd size. We bought our envelopes retail. You know, I mean, we you know just did dumb things, but our cards sold. And my brother was filling orders from underneath his dorm room bed in college, and so we started doing some greeting card stuff. And then uh, after a few years, we realized that we could we had a choice. We could be in the greeting card business, or we could create cards. And which did we want to do? And we were filling orders from a little warehouse and stuff like that. We thought, let's be in the creative end of it. And so um, we uh, linked up with a company called Recycled Paper Greetings. And they're out of Chicago. And um, so now you know, it's been over 25 years, and we've worked with them on the greeting card end of things. I do the, I do the artwork. My brother and I both work on the words, and um, he handles the business end of things. So uh, it works pretty well, and my brother added up that over the years, our cards, have, we sold probably over 100 million cards. Wow. That's a, a lot of... That's exciting. So no wonder your work is everywhere. <laughs> well, a lot of ways to take a piece of paper and say, make it say happy birthday in a way that, you know, that's tries to be fresh and new. So um, that's that's what we do for the greeting card end of things. And so a lot of my business has morphed from the uh, advertising and editorial stuff, although I still do do some of that, not as much as I'd like, um, into the, the greeting card stuff, which you know moves back into some graphic design elements as well, and and then into the children's books. The, the wonderful thing about doing the greeting cards is that it allows me to expand the style of work I do. Not only can I do the cartoon, the whimsical uh, style of cartooning, but if there's a graphic look that I notice somewhere that I, you know, gee, I could reinterpret that like this, I have a chance to try that. And again, it's pretty entrepreneurial because if the company likes the, the card, they'll test it. And if it passes test, then it gets into the line. So you may come up with 10 ideas and one card gets into the line. So the rate of success is, you know, not real high, but you hopefully after a number of years, you make it make sense. Well, that's great that it allows Is that a you long answer to a short question? No, that, that's actually excellent. I mean, it, it, I think it's great that it that allows you to express and, and find your... Um, your your creative path, you know, not just stuck to one style. It's been extraordinary that way because I get to try, you know, if I want to try acrylics, I can try acrylics or, you know, simply watercolor, I can try that. Or if I want to try a linoleum block, you know, printing and then put it into Photoshop and assign colors to, to different areas, um, I can I can try that. Um, you know, type treatments with, you know, texture things. I can try that. So it gives me a broad range, you know, of creative freedom, which is wonderful. Um, but at the end of the day, if the card doesn't sell, it, you know, it doesn't work, you know. So in order to get paid, I have to keep, you know, I'm I'm not a spring chicken anymore, you know. And, and so you, you keep looking for ways of how do I reach... Uh, with a card, an audience that's going to, you know, that they want to aim the cards at. If they want to aim the cards at uh, 25, 27, 30-year-old women, then how do I, as a 60-some-year-old guy, relate to what a 20-some-year-old woman would want to buy? So I have to do admit to feeling a little bit awkward going to Barnes and Noble and walking out with a wedding and, or the Knot magazine, you know, and feeling a little self-conscious at that, you know. So, but you do what you can to do you research into the what the market wants to buy. <laughs> Say again. You're, you got to go to all the clubs, all the uh, hip clubs and everything. You know, I I've I've tried some of that. Um, and I, I sat there with my watercolor kit by the stage as a band would play, and I wound up uh, 
you know, giving my watercolors to the band or to other people, and and uh, uh, and that's been interesting because here this old guy is sitting there, you know, physically with with watercolor and a little travel kit and a brush and a tablet standing by the stage painting while people are watching a band and that's doesn't doesn't commonly happen in in clubs and I I'd done it a couple times and the, this last time this gal came up to me and she looked at me and said are you the guy who was painting at the Detroit bar a few months ago and I said well, yeah you're the mystery artist <laughs> and she comes up with this story that never really happened she said, you know, I watched you and you did this painting and it was incredible and then you tore it out and threw it down and walked out of the room. <laughs> I thought, wow, that sounds dramatic, but, but it never happened that way, <laughs> you know, so. So, so, it's, so in I, other words, it's, it's also a good way to pick up chicks is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> that, do a little crowd surfing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't worked that way. So, <laughs> well, you got to get a pair of skinny jeans like Carlos has. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, let's not. <laughs> oh, Bob. Can you talk a little bit about your promotion? How have things changed over the years for you? I, I know, like Carlos and I are old school. You know, kind of like, um, you know, getting started in the early days, things were much different. And and now things have changed. Um, you know, with the computer coming into play and the internet and that kind of stuff. What are you doing to keep up with that? Boy, you know, I, I watched one of your earlier interviews, and I was dreading this question. Because <laughs> we can ask you a different one. <laughs> because I am, I am terrible at this. And this is, you know, my, my, I have a website, sure. Is my website seven years old? Does it show a book that I did that was on the New York Times bestseller list for 18 weeks? No. You know, you know, obvious things that I should have put on the website, does it have? No. So my, my primary goal is to refresh my website and to be better at, you know, either doing a blog or, uh, you know, I've, I've heard about pros and cons about email blasts and agency access and things like that. What I've found has consistently worked better for me, you know, at least as it relates to the um, children's book world, which I think would translate to advertising world because people are people, sure. is something personal. Um, right. Whenever I send in the illustrations for a children's book, I always, or, you know, the occasional job where they still want original art instead of digital art, I'll send in a hand-drawn uh, note where I'll take the extra time to draw a note, ink it in, watercolor it, jot a note, and happen to happen, just happen to put on the note. If there's anything else that you need or if there's anything amiss, feel free to call me at, and I put my phone number or my email address, you know. And That's then great. invariably that. someone's going to take that note and they don't want to throw it away because it's a piece of original art, yeah, so they'll stick right. it up on their bulletin board. And I've heard of, of cases where someone, you know, has moved from one job to another and they've taken down three or four or five of my notes down off their bulletin board. Well, at least it keeps my name in front of them, you know. And, yeah, it's old school, but it, it keeps a personal connection. And often today, you know, there have been times when I've gotten jobs where I never talk to anybody. You know, an email comes in, Steve, would you like to do a job for such and such? I email back, sure, sounds great. They send me the article, I send them a sketch, sounds great, can you tweak this? I tweak that, send them a new sketch, do the final art, send it to them, never, never talk to a person. That's probably unwise on my part. I should pick up the phone and say, hey, how did that turn out? Mm. How's it going? What is it you're trying to capture here, you know, and carry on that kind of conversation? I sure. think that would make for a more human connection and uh, be better in the long run. It is something that's missing, you know, in in the way that business is done now. I remember, you know, many years ago, um, going from agency to agency, kind of like you had mentioned earlier, and you 
bring in your portfolio and a box of donuts and you'd go see your favorite yep. art director and I really miss those days and, and I think what you're doing there is really fantastic. The idea of sending you know something personalized is really missing from you know a lot of what's going on today and, and I think that's a, a great idea. I, I, I love I love the idea of sending something like that. And and I think that's what like um you know I know that the the company called Agency Access is used for email blasts and things like that. What I want to use them for, and this is, again, I feel uncomfortable because have I used it for them yet? No. What I want to use them for is, okay, what's the name of the art director on this account, you know, mm -hmm. and how could I target that person with some samples of my work that would fit the product that he's working on? So that's the kind of thing that I want to do. Does it take more work on my part? Yeah. But... Do I have a better likelihood, maybe, of uh, showing the kind of style that I do to someone who's working with that account who may not have ever considered using a whimsical style to communicate their product? Right. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that, that echoes what Bob and I have talked about in the past is really, you know, um, choosing to go after a more uh, highly focused, targeted uh potential clients, a group of potential clients versus, you know, just subscribing to, you know, 2,000, you know, a 2,000 mailing list list of from somewhere and just blasting everyone out with an email, which comes across very impersonal. You kind of get lost, you know, in, in everybody else's, in, in, in the uh, inbox with everybody else's email, and you fail to make that impact with that, you know, with that, with that one person where you think you can have the best possibility of landing a project with, where you can help them and, and, and they can be more receptive to your work. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I think that's a, that you're absolutely right. I had a, a rather sobering thing happen uh, the other day. Um, uh, the, the last agent that I had, you know, before, you know, we, we parted ways very amicably, and I have nothing, nothing at all negative to say about the guy. But... Uh, he had shown some of my work um, in particular. It was an illustration of a little man in a garden. And he had a, and he was standing proudly with his hoe in his garden. And he had next to him a tomato about the size of a Volkswagen. I mean, it was, you know, giant tomato. So it was humorous to me in, the, in that playing with scale and playing with, uh, this little guy in his little garden with his one enormous tomato. I thought it was a fun illustration. I thought it was a, a whimsical illustration. I thought it captured your attention. Not that I'm biased at all, but you know, I, you know, I thought it was good. And my agent showed this illustration to an art director, and the guy looked at it and said, "Who would ever buy this?" And it it hit me. You know, it was you know it it. It was like a splash to cold water. So I thought, you know who would buy this? Scott's Miracle Grow would buy this. You know, and so I made up a fake ad. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send that to whoever handles the Scott's Miracle Grow account and say, Hey, have you considered a different way of showing your product? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that I need to be doing more thinking. Um, I don't. I, I. I don't know what art directors are coming out of college, uh, art school, or wherever. I don't know if they think about using illustration in the same way that people, you know, years ago when we started, would think about it. You know, and so I think it's going to be my job to say, how do I take what I do? And and it takes extra time. You know, I'm not getting paid for this, but show an example of maybe something like this could add some fun and lightness and entertainment to what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Don't don't rely on someone else to see how your work can be used. Show them, give them ideas on how your work can be used. E exactly. And and I when people suggested that to me years ago, I thought, well, these guys can think. Let them think. And I realize, you know, when the phone stops ringing, maybe they're not thinking. So maybe I need to do yeah, some of that. Yeah, they, they have a business. Right than they're due. Yeah, just like everybody else. So, 
Yeah, well, you have, have you have you noticed in, for example, in in uh, uh, on television, car ads? Do most of them look the same? You oh, know, there you got a card sliding sideways across the salt flat mm -hmm. with you know smoke going. Now, why a card sliding sideways is a good advertisement for the traction of a car, I never quite understood. But they do that because it's dramatic, and all these car ads look the same. And I can only think of maybe one car company that that has a different take, and that's Subaru because they have this, you know, Subaru, you know, and connection with love and have some humor in their ads and things like that. But most of the car ads are pretty s similar, and I'm thinking, why doesn't somebody do an animated ad about Jeep? Because you can say things in animation, in cartoon, that by its very nature, unreal. So you can have the jeep crawling up straight up a cliff, or you know, around a tree, or over a waterfall, or whatever, and it might stand out. Now, I don't know if it'd be a good ad or not, but I, I'm trying to think of how can a product that's advertised in a certain way regularly be shown differently through the kind of stuff that you and I do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about that a lot, Carlos and I, um, you know, finding different places where you can help people stand out. And, and a yeah. lot of the time, you know, there's a sort of a, there's a weird mindset where it might be safer not to stand out, you know, so you don't, you, you're not the guy who took that chance. But um, if you are willing to take that chance, guaranteed you're going to stand out, you know. And so, yeah, and that's the, that's the difficulty because how many art directors, you know, or clients want to spend the budget to take that chance. Right. You know? they, yeah, there's, yeah they, they fall back on that safe thing, and I think safe is just so boring. It's, it's, it, it drives me nuts. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, we do right. talk it really about goes that. goes against you know. the grain of everything they're trying to accomplish, you know, spending millions of dollars trying to get people's attention, and it, when they're doing what everybody else is doing, they're, they're basically just getting lost in the shuffle, you know. Yeah. Did you did you ever see that documentary Art and Copy? No, I haven't seen that one. Uh, look for it. It's it's fascinating because it traces some history of advertising and uh, how it got how it grew up. You know, with you know interviewing people like um, Lee Clow at Shiat Day and other people talking about that the the famous Apple Mac 1984. Mac commercial that ran one time at the Super Bowl, and things like that, and how the the business has changed. And I think nowadays we're in a stage where people are risk averse, and um, and then stock imagery and Photoshop certainly have taken a toll on on what I do and what we do. Yeah, there's there's such an immediacy now to artwork. I, I remember you know when we first started back in those days. Uh, what we would spend, you know, a couple days or a week on or is now due in a day, you know, and if oh, yeah. you make changes, those changes are due overnight, you know, where we used to have uh, much more time to, to actually sit down and think and, then, and to really craft your work, you know. Um, exactly. Yeah. And people would stay, you know, I, I would say I don't, I don't ever bang it out. I carefully craft it in, in a rapid fashion. So, <laughs> yeah, but can you carefully wrap, craft it in a rapid fashion by tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, I, I I read the other day where a, a fellow illustrator had, from the time the phone rang for a, um, an assignment till the time it was due, he had one hour. Wow! wow. It was that for the Wall Street cool. Journal, and yeah. it was a, an illustration that was due right now. It's ten o'clock. So, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was my computer telling me what time it is. <laughs> I thought that was Carlos. I was going to be like Carlos. <laughs> my stomach is grumbling. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that boy. I'll tell you. Yeah, an hour for a deadline. That's that's something. <laughs> what do you get for that for that hour? You know. Um, sort of loose. Well, you know, I, I, I wasn't given that assignment. When, when I got uh, an illustration from the Wall Street Journal a few years ago, um, I had the luxury of four or five hours. And, <laughs> well, and there so, you go. I mean. <laughs> and, and so I, I, I did some sketches, sent them off, went and grabbed a quick lunch, came back, saw the results, did the art, scanned it, sent it off, 
that was on a Wednesday and it was in Friday morning's paper, you know, so it was like bang zoom. But the pay was, yeah, I think between three and 500 or something like that. So it was a quick turnaround. Let, let me ask you a quick question. You, uh, just going back to um, the greeting card thing that you're doing with your brother. Um, I've done, I haven't done greeting cards, so this is just me asking and you feel free to tell me what you can, what you want and what you don't want. Uh, how's that business work? Do they pay you up front? Is it based on a royalty? Uh, do they give you uh, the demographics that they're looking to address, and then you go off and, and work in, in different ideas for that demographic? How is that? How's that set up? You know, I think it's it's different for different companies, but I can give you a couple uh, rough ideas. Some companies like uh, Hallmark or American Greetings um, buy the work outright. You know, it's a flat fee. You give us, we'll give you the assignment, and this is what I've heard because I haven't worked directly with mm -hmm. them. But this is what I have heard: they'll give you the assignment, you know, do an illustration of a, you know, mountain scene with a river or whatever the idea is, and uh, send us the art, and we'll give you your money, and you go away, and we'll produce the card in as many versions or ways as it, that we want. So it's a work for hire. Yeah, work for hire. Okay. Um, the company that we work with does not work that way. They were started entrepreneurially, and they they work that way. And so, um, they will send us um, a wish list. Okay, so for this season, or for this sentiment, or for this, you know, round of birthday submissions, we're looking for things that are humorous or we're looking for things that are whimsical or affectionate and or woman to woman or you know they'll give us some things we were overrepresented in with the color yellow or whatever it is um, we're underrepresented in some of these things so we'll get some ideas uh, loosely of ideas that the company is looking for and then it's our job to uh, come up with ideas and so we'll come up with ideas, we'll submit them, and if they're chosen, you know, then they get tested, and, and if they make it, they get into the market. Um, if they're tested and they don't make it, we'll get a, a minor kill fee, like, you know, it's, you know, uh, 100 bucks or somewhere less than that, maybe. And then, so it doesn't pay for your time, you know, if it you only make money if the card gets accepted and it gets out in the market and it gets royalties. Um, and royalties can range in greeting card companies, you know, give or take around 5% of uh, the wholesale price of a card. So you got to sell a lot of cards to, to you know, make, make money at it. Um, but, you know, a lot of companies and a lot of people say I would rather have the security of you know an upfront flat fee than take the risk on a royalty that may not pay off for years sure. so you know people it's up to the way people are wired you know and 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 that so for for us it's a matter of the whole package we come up with the words we come up with the captions I mean that is the words uh, we come up with the, the visual we come up with the way the papers folded and we pitch them on trying to take a, a piece of paper and you know you know make it look make it look different have, an, have a, yet another way of saying happy birthday you know the, that hasn't been said before which is a little bit of a challenge sometimes so what you supply is final art then you're not, it's not a sketch it's final art oh good question um, occasionally because we work so long with a company we can do a pencil sketch and maybe tag it with a sample of this style mm. is how we'd render this sketch and they can look at the style of the finished product and the pencil sketch and, and make the connection um, but often because the business is becoming more competitive we will uh, make the cards more finished on the front end which takes more time because you're doing almost final art for a submission that may never get past that first look. Now do you find that producing the final art increases the possibility of it going through all the way? 
I have to think it does okay. because there's an Im some people will send in art digitally and that is some ways easier and certainly saves on FedEx costs and stuff like that. I like the idea of sending a physical sample idea in um, because people, when they buy a card, they hold it, open it, and look at it. And so as much as I can replicate that process in the people who review our cards, I want to replicate that. Even if it's putting foil on the front or glitter on the front or, you know, things like that, you know, I'll, we'll make a mock-up with as many of those things as we can in hopes that people can catch the idea of it and, you know, say, oh, we like this. So do you work traditional oh, drawing work? We, go ahead, I'm sorry, I stepped all over you, Bob. Oh, see how that is? <laughs> <laughs> Just wipe my feet on your forehead. <laughs> oh, man, look at that. Oh, yeah, here comes Carlos. <laughs> I was going to ask you, do you do all your work traditionally or do you do some of it on the computer? I'll do both. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll draw it uh, traditionally and then put it in the computer and apply um, different effects or different background or, you know, make tweaks and stuff like that. Um, you know, I've got a drawing here that I did. I don't know if this, does that read at all? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Can you see how the guy's hat has two lines above the head, above the hat? Yeah. That's because I'm going to take Photoshop and take one of them out. Oh, okay, I yeah. gotcha. So, so you got to be pretty to... adept at Photoshop at this point. Well, no, I, I'm adept at about three tools. <laughs> <laughs> you learn that. what you need to learn. <laughs> but this, this is like what I'm looking at when I'm taking my little travel watercolor kit to that concert or other things. I'm holding my watercolors, my tablet, and I'm being secret and spy-like in the way that I... Uh, observe people and and draw and paint in, in restaurants and places like that. I love that. Because your style, that style hasn't really changed much over the years. That no, I that, that style hasn't. But now when I go and take my little traveling paint box, I'll, I'll often, you know, do things that are more realistic, like this ocean scene from a, a recent vacation, you know. So that's entirely different. And yet... Um, you know, then then the typical you know cartoon you know kind of piece like you know something like this of the uh, you know the little the little person in the rain you know that's that's more typical of what I'm known for. But I'm you know I'm I'm constantly trying different things to stretch myself. Yeah, I've seen you post on your Facebook page some of the um, you just posted I think the other day uh, it was a, a tractor. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, and those are beautiful. I mean, you know, I was going to ask you. Is the the greeting card line that you're producing? Is it um, is it the Steve Yorkman line of greeting cards, or 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 are they just kind of incorporating it into what their overall umbrella? Because it would seem to me that your style is is pretty distinctive enough and unique enough that you could probably develop your own line of greeting cards where you get to call the shots and it's your your line of greeting cards, uh, very much like what was the who was the um, was it Benton like your decade? Oh, Boy ago. Boynton. Boynton, yes, so yes, similar Bo to that. Boynton um, actually did her cards through the same company that we're working with through Recy recycled paper greetings. Okay. Um, so here are a couple cards. Our names are on the back, so it'll say Bjorkman Brothers on the back of the card. Um, so in one sense, we have some identity within the company. It's not just uh, our cards are not completely lost in the, in the milieu. But if I hold up, you know, three samples of cards here that, that we've done, you know, the one of the lizard looks probably closest to what might be associated with my style. Right. But you know, this is certainly much more of a graphic kind of look. And, um, you know, and this is, you know, taking, you know, uh, uh, a lettering look and, and playing with it, you know, largely in photo to come up with different patterns and stuff like that. So would people looking at something like this say this is a Bjorkman? Probably not. Um, but there will be occasionally cards. Let me see if I have a, any samples here. Uh, 
I don't think this went anywhere, but it was for a Halloween card, and it was a person with a pumpkin head and a guitar. That's really so. Cool. You know, that's is that my style? Yeah, except that I don't usually draw pumpkin heads. But you know, it's uh, so I will still try to incorporate uh, some of the cartoon style I'm known for. But I, I particularly don't try to limit myself to that because the overall goal in the cards isn't to say, look at Steve Bjorkman's work. Mm -hmm. It's to sell more cards. Right. You know, the place that where my style probably is still relatively consistent is in the children's book stuff that I've done. Okay. Excellent. And how many books have you done? Over the I have illustrated close to a hundred picture books for kids. Wow. I wish I could say they were all still in print. I can't. I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> they come and go quickly sometimes. Yeah. Oh, they go too quickly. I'm afraid. <laughs> have you started in eBooks at all, or have somebody has somebody approached you for eBooks? You know, a, um, a couple of the publishers have have tried that. In, in my thinking. Um, a picture book uh, has a, a certain quality about it, you know, that you, know, you turn the page and you see these images. If it's a novel, like a spy novel that I'm reading, it's just words, and doing an ebook makes sense. If I'm going to do a picture book as an ebook, I would want to make it something that becomes interactive. Okay, push on this and the dog moves, or jumps, or barks, or, you know, push this and it takes you into a different corner of the world of that. So that would be the kind of ebook that I would want to do in picture books. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to me that, you know, the ebook it lends itself to certain things that, you know, to to replicate the same thing you're doing in in, in paper form and just put it in an ebook seems to be kind of short sighted. You want to be able to leverage you know the technology that ebook offers. So, exactly. uh, Bob has done a, a couple of ebooks. Um I don't know if they've gotten too involved with the interaction. Have they, Bob? Um, there is some, but, you know, unfortunately, the way that stuff is being released and mainly on Amazon, the interactivity is somewhat limited. Um, when you get into, um, you know, working with um, the iTunes uh, library, so you go through, through the Apple, um, you, you have a little bit more interactivity. It's... You know, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying because I think the same thing. You think like, you know, all these years when I was illustrating children's book, how great would it be if we could do this or do that or do this, you know, and now you exactly. can do those things. So to, to find the right outlet, I think, for that is still not quite there, but it's getting closer, you know, that like some of it's there and some of it's not. So, so Amazon, who happens to be the biggest uh, publisher right now, kind of limits that stuff. But if you go through some of the other outlets, you can do some of those things. Oh, see, that's news to me because um, I would want to do those things. Yeah, yet, of course. If if your market is limited, then you've spent a lot of money and a whole lot of time for something that you're not going to recoup your costs on. And if Amazon has a bigger market, then okay, then what? I don't know yet, but what kind of technology can they do, and how can I leverage that to to put as much of that um, into this? book to, you know, to make it work. Right. Another thing I've, I, I've toyed with is the idea, remember years and years ago, well, we wouldn't remember, but years and years ago, Charles Dickens' work was serialized, you know, and it came out, mm -hmm. you know, in the newspaper every so often. Right. I'm wondering if that Amazon kind of world, you could take a picture book and have, you know, the further adventures of such and such and have that be serialized. I don't know. I'm just I think you could do that quite easily, sure. Quite toying with ideas here. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think, you know, once you get pat once you get into a certain level of, of interactivity, you you come out of the the ebook world and you start getting into the app world, you know, uh, because uh, it, it involves a lot of programming and that kind of stuff, but yeah. yeah. I think it's really exciting. I'd love to see, you know, those new things and some of the stuff that's going on with books right now. So, yeah, really interesting. Yeah, I think they're still kind of experimenting with, you know, the things they'd like to see, and then you know what what becomes cost prohibitive at some point, you know. Right. Right. And, and how do you sell it? How do you market it? All, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and you know I know that I could take an image of mine and uh, 
you know, say say if I was using this uh, lizard on the Easter egg, it would be easy for me to animate this where his tail moves, his mouth opens, his tongue comes out, flips around, comes back, you know, or that he gets knocked off the egg because the egg opens and a chick flies out. You know, I would doing all of those things would be easy for me to do in sequential Photoshop layers, mm -hmm. you know, and it would, it would be relatively simple, but it would take a great deal of time. Now, then to find a programmer who was able to take and make all of those work into a, an ebook, I don't know how to do that, and that would be the collaborative step that I'd want to take. It does uh, Doing the greeting cards, have you gotten into uh, e-cards at all, or I mean, you mentioned uh, that you know the lizard possibly moving and that kind of thing. The the e cards that we've done, um, uh, we've done through uh, through recycled and through American Greetings, and I, I'm embarrassed to say I've forgotten the name of the e-card store. Card store, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. I don't even made it more easy for you to That's why I need my brother who handles the business. <laughs> <laughs> but what they do is they, they don't do animated cards, um, and they don't do e-cards that way. But what they do, I think, is a brilliant model, and it goes back to how we began the conversation with something personal. If I was in an airport and I realized I'd forgotten, and I'm go heading off to Chicago for a business trip for a few days, oh my gosh, it's my wife's birthday in two days, and I forgot. I uh -oh. could sit there in the airport, <laughs> and I could go on to card store. I could find the card I liked. I could type in, Dear Diane, and, and I could personalize an inside message, and they would print the card, put it in an envelope, address it, put a stamp on it, and mail it. So my wife would get in the mail, a card. Now, would my handwriting be on it? No. But would it be personalized to her with a message from me? You know, yes. And I think that's a, a brilliant concept because it comes closer to making something electronic, something physical and uh, tangible. Yeah, there's um, there's a uh, oh, what's what's the uh, what's the name of these um. There's a company called, I think, Send Out Cards. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. Uh, you Send It? You, is it You Send It? It might be. I, I'm not sure. So I think it's Send Out Cards. Okay. And it's um, it's like a not a multi-level company, but it, like one of these, uh, you know, person-to-person -person kind of sales. What do they call those? The um, uh, I, I, I've drawn a blank. But anyway, they, they do that. that. That's their whole business model is to be able to, you go online, you pick a card, you can even upload images, create your own card, pick hand, you know, hand different hand fonts and personalized cards, and basically you hit done, and the company takes care of sending it for you. Yeah. Um, which I think is you know great because it's it's not it's not as personal as let's say what you were doing where you were sending someone a, a real you know personalized hand handwritten or hand drawn note. Um, right. But it comes pretty close to you know, so you're not having to purchase something generic off the shelf and and be able to personalize it with someone's name and uh, a personal image and a personal message. Well, in in this, it's especially great if you say been at a business meeting and if you've taken a photograph of the group of people that have collaborated on a certain project, you could upload that photo image to that card personalize a message to the inside and while you're still at the airport send it back to that client and they get a physical reminder of the fact that you were there and had that interaction exactly. so there's a lot of good good ways to to use something like that so Steve let, you know we're, we're running up on uh, close to what like maybe 40 minutes and I know that you you, you know your time was um, Sure, to begin with. So I, I want to be really conscious of that. How do you see yourself moving forward in closing? You know, as far as you know, the changes in the business. Um, how do you see yourself moving forward from here? Any new markets? Um, how are you evaluating? 
you know, the, the economy as we see it right now and, and what you see possible for yourself moving forward in the next year or so? Um, I'd probably say on two or three fronts. First of all, I have to update my website, which I'm embarrassed to even say this because it's been so long. So I got to update my website and include some motion things. So if I want to do animation um, like I've done in the past, I need to show examples of that on the website. Um, and especially, you know, so when people open their computer, you know, you see sometimes ads of a dancing Obama or a whatever that, that keeps repeating on the side that annoys you. So how could my work be something whimsical that wouldn't annoy someone but could help in, in advertising? So I'm, I need to be thinking of how can my work uh, be refreshed and used out there in advertising. So that's that's the number one thing I'm trying to do. Also with the children's books, I'm working on writing as well as illustrating. So um, I'm expanding, you know, creatively into the writing as well as the as the illustrating. Um, um, I want to be physically, you know, targeting some of the ad kind of work or, or editorial kind of work by sending samples targeted to that man or to that product so that I'm not just doing a here's the kind of style I do but more specifically here's how the kind of style I do could work for you. Exactly. Excellent. Wait, great, great message to close the uh, interview with. Oh, uh, thank, you. thank you so much for uh, lending us your time and, and joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And for me, it's been a huge pleasure because I've been such a huge fan for so many years. Oh, well, you're very kind. It's been delightful. Thank you so much. Thanks, Steve. And I All have right. no idea how to sign out. <laughs> well, Steve, before, we, <laughs> before you sign out, um, where can people find you? What's your web address? Uh, Twitter, if you're on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you need to put out there for people to find your work. Um, well, the, the hardest part is spelling my name. Uh, so it's stevebjorkman.com, and on the bottom of the screen, it, it, it says how to spell the name, uh, B-J-O-R-K-M-A-N. And finally, I, I, I did some. It's not implemented yet, but when I start to get the new website going, I got the domain name for people who can't spell my name and to call it idrawideas.com. Excellent. And so I'm going to link the two together, and hopefully it'll make that easier. But that's not there yet. So right now it's stevebjorkman.com, and that gives information how to get a hold of me and all the rest. And I'm certainly on Facebook uh, uh, under Steve Bjorkman and regularly post a variety of things, both like the tractor image that's more realistic uh, that you saw or cartoon stuff that, you know, it, I'll, I'll find tells the story and I'll put that up. Excellent. Well, we'll include the links in, in the post uh, in addition to some some of the images um, that we'll find on your Facebook page and just kind of put them in there with links back to uh, areas where people can find you. Uh, again, thanks, Bob. Thank you for joining us again. I know thanks, this Charles. is a, a Friday thanks, hangout on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much, guys. All right. Thanks, Steve. Have a great day. Thanks, thank you, you too. for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.